Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to look at weights and biases, a tool which is specialized for machine learning experiment management that helps you with a bit of traceability. You know, if you are building uh, an LLM powered application or a rag pipeline, how can you track those experiments, you know, on prompt level, on chain level, and so on and so forth. Now, weights and biases, uh, or in short, WAN B is not something new. We have used this for ML experimentation earlier as well. Now, weights and biases is easy to use with the orchestration frameworks like Langchain and Llama Index. It's very easy to integrate and work with it. This helps you, you know, track your uh, pipelines to find out if there is any problem, if there is something which is breaking out uh, in this entire pipeline, if the prompts are working fine, and a lot of other details that you can monitor from the dashboard. Now, this is what we are going to look. So we'll have a very simple rag pipeline. We'll try to see that how we can use weights and biases or WAND B with Langchain. So let's start our experimentation with this. Now, I'm going to do this experiment in Google Colab. You can see I have my Colab opened over here. And the first thing that we need is OpenAI. You can do with any other LLMs as well. But just to keep it simple in this tutorial video, I'm going to use OpenAI, both the embeddings and the LLMs over here. Now, for the first thing that we have to do is that we're going to upload a document. So let me just upload a document from here. Uh, excuse me, that's in uh, desktop, uh, domain specific data. And I'm going to upload this uh, PDF file, which is uh, I already have created an insurance uh, a specific rag, a rag pipeline or an application or a system, whatever you call it, for you know retrieving information from an insurance based document. Now, if you look at here, this is the document that we have uploaded. Now, imagine if you have you can have a number of documents like this. This is something called glossary of common insurance terms. So these are all terms related to insurance. Uh, basically, you can look at accident policies, you know, cash values, etc. over here. Now, this is what I'm going to use here. Okay, this is my document. The first thing that we have to do is we're going to install the uh, libraries. So let's do that. So pip install Langchain. And I'm going to use Langchain here as an orchestration framework. You can also use Llama Index. By the way, they are doing really good nowadays uh, with a lot of multi-modalities kind of uh, workflow that they are creating. Yeah, but Langchain has the added advantage. Uh, we all know. Uh, Langchain, and let's put our version over here. Uh, this is the version that I have found uh, easier or seamless to work with. Sometimes, you know, it's, there are a lot of version dependencies and conflict when you use Langchain with OpenAI and other libraries. Now, after that, I need OpenAI. So let me just do OpenAI. I need FAS. I'm gonna use FAS CPU and then tick token. And then I also need WendB. So let's get that. Uh, it will install, uh, while it's installing, uh, I'm going to use OpenAI API as I said, because we're gonna use GPT models over here. So let's do that. Uh, we're gonna use Turbo here. So to do that, there are two, there are two, three ways basically you can use uh, your keys, OpenAI API keys or any other API keys in Colab notebook. You know, they have one thing that that's here. You can see it says secrets where you can save your secret keys, like all of your ENVs that we used. Now that's the one way and you can also do OS dot uh, get in one and something like that to do that as well. You can use uh, uh, through dot ENV as well. Depends what you want to do. Uh, I'll keep it simple. I'll go here and then I will create and you can see they already have here. Okay, let me just I have a secret key. You can see I'll just do a notebook access. So you can see this is how you set open AI API key and then you keep your key over here and then just hide it. That's how you can add a secret. You can also add multiple secret keys over here. These are all your like you can use it through the name. I'll show you how you can use it. Okay. Uh, let's then start writing the code and I'll just hide this for now okay so let me just go back to files because that's the PDF that's where we have now what we're gonna do is uh, let me have import OS first and then after import OS I'll just do from Google excuse me google.collab import user data Okay, so you can fetch that API keys through user data. So let's get user data and then os.invarn. Okay, the environment. 
So you can see os.in1, not wind be API key. I'm going to replace this with openAI. OpenAI API key and then user data dot get OpenAI API key. You can also set for WAND B as well, but I will show you that you can also give it once you are running it for the first time in the runtime itself. Once you execute a prompt, we'll see that in a bit. Now we are just setting up our OpenAI keys over here. Now, once you do that, now Langchain and Llama index has direct integration with WAND B. So you can just uh, yeah, initiate like this. Let me show you OS dot in one. You can just do os dot in one and here what you have to do is you just do the lang chain when be tracing true okay so it's a uh, lang chain when be and then tracing you just do this lang chain when be tracing and then just make it true that's it now once you do that you will now be able to work with lang chain integration uh, uh, in when be weights and biases okay now if you but for to do that you need an api key from weights and biases as well so if you open weights and biases let me show that once you write weights and biases over here something like that okay once you go inside it it's a us based organization of course uh, once you click it says the ai developer platform weights and biases helps ai developers build better models faster quickly track experiments version and iterate on data sets evaluate model performance reproduce models and manage your ml workflows end to end now it gives you different types of uh, subscriptions i will say you can start with personal which is free to use till i'm creating this video it's free to use for personal uses and you can also have you know uh, enterprise team professionals blah 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 right you can do that depending on what you want if you come here on the pricing you'll see that okay uh, let's click on pricing now, once you see on pricing, it says personal, it's free for use. At least give 100 GB storage of the artifacts. Now, the artifacts that you track, if you track, if your data is like less than 100 GB, I think you are okay to work with. Now, if you're working in an enterprise, probably you will be, you know, also be looking about security as an as, uh, as an aspect there because you are sending your prom data to vendor B, right? So, uh, that's where enterprise comes in play where you have secure storage connectors as you can see it over there and you have SSOs you know that will only look at your active directories or whatever to interact with it so you can do all of those things with enterprise teams is like for startups you know a mid-sized company where you want to work you can use teams to do that okay but I'm gonna rely on personal now you have to sign in you can sign in with your gmail github and you can also through an other emails as well now I'm already in, uh, you can see this is how it looks like and I'll show you, you can get an API key from here by the way. Okay, you can see your API key for logging into the Vendaby library. Okay, now this is how you get your API key. You can install and you can also log in in the notebook to get it. But I'll show you how you can do that uh, through the first prompt. Okay, uh, I think I forgot to install PyPDF because I have a PDF, so let's do that. Now we're gonna go into a very simple rag. Pip install PyPDF. In this pi pdf you can see it's installing pi pdf now uh, let it happen by the way i like this image uh let me just go back i i, I need this kind of image i will use this my for my thumbnail as well okay uh, of this video now pip install pi pdf and uh, now we have the pi pdf now let's start with document loading and chunking strategies so from lang chain uh, dot document loader so i'm going to use document loaders and i need pi pdf loader so let's get pi pdf loader over here it would suggest me now pi pdf loader and the next thing is from langchain dot we're going to use uh, recursive character text splitter so let's use a text splitter import recursive character text splitter recursive character text splitter we are okay with it now let's have a loader variable that loads the pdf through pi pdf loader you can see i have a pi pdf loader and inside this pi pdf loader i'm going to get this my common insurance file so let's get that common insurance insurance terms dot pdf now i'm getting this file common insurance uh, terms dot pdf once you do the loader let's do a loader here let me add a few more cells you can see that we have an uh, object of which is a pdf now once you have the loader the next is loader dot load so documents equals loader dot load let's do that 
Now documents has your PDF now, so you can extract the PDF out of it. You can chunk it out. Now let's do that. So what I'm going to do is text splitter, text splitter equals uh, recursive character text splitter, and inside this you can define your chunk size. There is no you know formula of chunking strategies it's there is no thumb rule like that it's all trial and experiment so you have to keep on doing and seeing that what is the right chunking strategies for you you can chunk on you know headers or subheaders or the line breaks or whatever right depends on what kind of documents you have it's all the more you do better and faster you learn also okay so the chunk size well, let's keep it 500 then you have a chunking strategies or not chunking it's chunk overlap okay for how many tokens you want to overlap it's always better to have one tenth of your chunk size. So I'm going to keep 50 over here. That's what it suggests. Uh, chunk overlap is done. Now after that, I'm going to use split that. So text uh, equals text splitter dot split documents. I'm going to use text splitter dot split documents. Okay, so let's do that. And then I'm going to pass your text uh, documents, by the way. Then I'm going to pass my documents. Yeah. And then you just do first, it's a list, so you can, basically it's a page content. It's a page content within a list. You can find out through uh, their, you can, in, through their indexes of elements. So you can see text zero, which gives you the first of the chunk. Okay, so this is what we see. Uh, document, glossary of comments and term, blah, 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 right? It has a simple metadata. If you want to enrich your metadata, I have a video that you can look at how to, because LangChain only gives you page number and PDF name okay, or the name of your that particular document as a metadata which might not be sufficient for you if you are building a complex rag or an optimized rag or a rag which contains both sparse and dense vectors based search which calls which which has been called as hybrid search where you have sparse vectors you have your dense vectors sparse vectors are nothing but the keyword based retriever uh, like bm25 etc and then the dense vector are nothing but the vectors based retriever like we use vector databases for that Please check out that video. If you want to build a better rags, look at my rag playlist. There are more than 25 videos of different use cases, better techniques like LOTR, merge retriever, re-ranking and blah, 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 right? You can find out that in the playlist. Now text zero is done. Now let's get our uh, uh, vector data, uh, databases thing and embedding thingy. Now from langchain dot uh, embeddings dot open AI, I'm gonna use open AI over here. You can see it says import, it is correct. Now we need FIAS because that's what we installed. It's good for faster demo purpose. From langchain dot vector stores uh, dot FIAS import FIAS. You can see it's correct. I'm not gonna use all of this now. Okay. Okay. Uh, FIAS is okay. Now once you do that, let's have a doc search. So doc search equals, and I'm gonna do FIAS dot from documents. If you have a Text file, you can also do fast dot from text, but I have a document. So I'm going to just do from documents and inside this, I'm going to pass texts and open AI embeddings. I don't need flat and all of those to specify by default. That is what it is. So let's keep it like that. Now open AI embeddings. Now, if you want to learn about that, how fast and other vector databases work, watch, uh, what are the different algorithm that fuels the vector databases, then watch my index and retriever video where I have explained algorithms like HNSW, Spotify, uh, Annoy, uh, and then I have also covered uh, Google Scan and, and then I have covered clustering. These are all approximate nearest neighbors algorithms. That's called ANN algorithm that basically fuels your vector databases. You can find out all these videos in my RAG playlist. Please watch all the 25 videos. You will be now in a position to create better RAGs. Doc search fast dot from documents. Let's get it here. Okay, uh, it's, it will take a bit of time depending on that. Now doc search is done. Let's persist this on directory. So vector databases is a very famous terminology. There is a word called persist directory. Okay, it's persisting the vector database. It's nothing but saving your embeddings on the local storage that you have. Okay, that memory that we are currently in. Okay, so let's save that. Now what I'm going to do here is doc search dot... Ah, Doc search dot save local or something. That's what it is, right? If as okay, correct. And then you can do, you have to define a path. So let's define, let's keep it content. Let's define content here. Like just keep it uh, like as it is, okay, in this runtime. 
So if you refresh this, you will see index.fast and index.pkl. Serialize, right? You have serialized your uh, embeddings. Now, once you want to reload it, you have to deserialize it. So serialized and deserialized. Now, again, if you want to learn how to create your own vector store from scratch, watch that video also in the rag playlist. That's called build your vector store from scratch, where I have shown that how can you create your own vector store very similar to what we have used like FAS and Chroma. Of course, not on that scale, but you can start something uh, on the small scale. Okay, uh, doc search dot save local. After that, what I'm gonna do is, we have our embedding thingy done. Let's create a chain, a very simple retrieval chain. Now from lang chain dot chains, then you're gonna do import retrieval QA, one of our favorites chain, uh, retrieval QA. And then I'm gonna also have LLM, so from langchain.llms and I'm going to do import open AI. Okay, this is what it is. Now let's get that. Huh. Uh, okay, the QA chain, a variable to create the chain. Uh, then you need retrieval QA chain. So retrieval, uh, excuse me. Uh, retrieval QA. Okay, I don't know what's the right pronunciation. Is it retrieval or retrieval? Okay, uh, and then you define your LLM first. So LLM equals I did a mistake. Retrieval queue from chain type. I don't know why it didn't suggest it me. Okay. Now here, the first thing that I'm going to do is LLM. And my LLM should be open AI. Of course, by default, it's 3.5 turbo. If you want to use GPT-4, you can do that. Now temperature, let's keep 0 0.3. A bit of creativity we need from the LLM here. And then chain type stuff, it has map re-rank, it has reduce, it has different type of chain type. Depends on what kind of huge cases you are working on. If you're working on summarization, you might need something like, you know, refine or something. It depends what kind of uh, uh, use cases that you are working. Now, yeah, chain type. And then chain type. Let's keep it stuff. Okay, it's very simple. Uh, chain type and then retriever equals. And then doc search dot retriever. So doc search dot as retriever. Okay, so docs as retriever. Okay, let's get it. Our chain is ready. Now let's run it. You can see this is our chain. Let me just do a QA chain to show you. Once you do a QA chain, you will see a pipeline of chain. Okay, retrieval QA. So it, it has an LLM chain. It has a prompt template, blah, 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 right? Everything. Now, once you have the QA chain, let's run it. So print. Ah, I don't know why I'm writing in this, by the way. Okay, you can write it just over here. Okay, uh, let's print our qa chain dot run thingy and i can ask a question let's see what kind of question we can ask so let me just open the pdf uh, quickly i'm going to ask about additional living expense so let me just copy this uh what do we mean by uh, additional uh, this one now once you run this it will ask you to uh, copy your api key so Till now, we haven't used weights and biases or wand B API keys into this notebook. Now, once you run it for the first time, it will ask you to enter the key and then it will give you a streaming response, a streaming traceability, not a response by the way. It will stream the logs in the weights and biases dashboard where you can track all of these experiments. So let's try it out. Now let's run it. And once you run it over here, uh, it will ask for your API keys. Yeah, you can see over here, you know, paste an API key and then hit enter. I have hit enter and it will say, okay, streaming Langchain activity too. You can see it automatically gets it because you have enabled the Langchain trace. Now it says streaming Langchain activity to weights and biases at this one. So let's open this over here. Now, once you open this, it will take you to the dashboard for this particular experiment. And you can see this automatically assigns a name that's called Winter Firefly 2. Now let me make it bigger so you can see it. Now if you look at the traces, it shows you first thing is, we'll talk about the trace. This is one question that I have asked with your timestamp. This is your input, this is your output. This is your chain, you didn't get any error and there's a model ID. Now it also gives you detail about the chain, how much time it took, you know, and if you look at here, first thing, the query was, what do you mean by additional living expenses? So the result is ALE refers to the coverage provided by an insurance policy that reimburses the policy holder, blah, blah, blah. It gives you some response. It gives you a metadata, chain, success, start time, end time, and all of those things. 
Now you can also track your systems. We'll, we'll talk about it in a bit. Right now we don't have sufficient data to talk about. Now what you can do, you can look at all of your chains, stuffed document chain. The, how did it stuff the, uh, all the chunks right, that you retrieved from your chain. You can look at input document 0, input document 1, input document 2, input document 3, whatever. Right? We have top k documents. That's what it retrieved. And then output text and all of this thing you can trace it over here. Now it has an LLM chain. What goes in the LLM chain? Okay, so the question, the context goes, you can see the context goes with the chain and then you have your output. Then open AI, you know, you have some detail about the prompt. You can see this is the prompt. Use the following pieces of information. Don't try to make up an answer, blah, blah, blah. Some zero sort prompting and all of those things. Now this is what you can track over here. Retrieval QA, you can keep on asking different questions as well. And what you can also do, you can also, you know, create a report or export this in a CSV file for your later purposes. This will help you because it, you will be able to get your inputs and outputs. Now, if you imagine you are building something like a feedback loop kind of a thing, not exactly the ILHF kind of a thing, which is very diff different and complex. Don't go with the hypes. Okay, it's a different topic. But now simple on the prompt level, if you want to know the feedback, Okay, that okay, which prompt, which response is better, which prompt is generating better responses. This kind of uh, workflow will help you uh, with weights and biases because you can export it and rate it uh, once in a one go or kind of a thing. Now, yeah, this is what the chart is. Now, let me ask one more question here. Okay, uh, let me show you. So if you keep on asking now, the, let me just copy. So the next time when you ask the question, it will not ask if you the key of course. Now let's see, let's ask a question. I'll ask what is coincidence maximum? So let me ask this. What is coincidence maximum? I'm asking this question now. It will just give you the answer here. It says the coincidence maximum is the maximum amount that an individual will have to pay for the covered health services during a policy period before their health plan you know begins paying 100 percent of the cost and the answer that we get now if you look at here it's the same answer the retriever works fine and the llm is able to generate the response now if you come over here you know just do a just do a refresh for now i'll make it a bit smaller yeah and now you can see the question, what is the coincidence maximum? You can find out the answer for that and similarly for the chain, uh, similarly for the uh, chains as well that you can get it over here. Now, yeah, but this is how, this is how it works guys. It's interesting uh, because, and now you can see your network traffic and a lot of other system related information you can get it from here. And that's what you get. Now, let me just, you can also export as CSV if you want to export. You can see that it exports the CSV over here. Uh, let me open it. And you get your CSV, you know, all of those details, outputs, chain, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, in the column, you can find out, you can do a fuzzy search and all of those things. You can reset your tables. We're fantastic, right? Now, the systems, uh, right now, you don't have much information in the logs. You can see it's just giving you the loss from Colab notebook. If you come to overview, it shows about, uh, you know, what is your account, which Colab link that you are working with, the CPU count and all the other information, the, all the trace that you have from your system. The charts is something that you'll be figuring out that you'll be working with. You can see the, the charts and you get your what is coincidence maximum similarly for that as well. Okay, over here. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think this is, let me ask one more question. Okay. So it says, I don't know because that system prompt by default nowadays, the LLMs are not giving you responses outside your context. Now, if you again come back here, Now, if you again come back here, yeah, uh, in a in a second you will see I don't know, right? So, yeah, this is what in all success. If you are getting any uh, error or something, you can also trace it out over here. 
so this is good uh, for if you want to do it as a beginner level but there are better tools that of course you can also use arij ai for more interpretability and you know traceability as well if you want to do that uh, arij ai by phoenix you can do that and uh, if you are already working on the hyperscalers you know uh, they provide you this logging ability you know like quick insights quick sites or whatever uh, and then there are uh, logging tools that hyperscaler like google gcp uh, uh, aws and microsoft provides yeah but i hope you uh, like the video guys uh, the code will be available on my github repository you can find the link in the uh, description and if you like the content please hit the like icon uh, if you have any comment thoughts or feedback please let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channels please find those information on the channel banner and the channel about us that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching see you in the next one